came to MacBook Air is a great laptop, but is it good for programmers? I will try to answer that question in this video. Before we get started, I want to specify that this is the M2 Air with 10 core GPU and 8 GB of RAM. I tried some of my past iOS projects and everything ran smoothly. I have not experienced any freezes on Xcode itself and have been able to run the simulator with no issues. As mentioned in the first impressions video I made for this MacBook, it actually compiles and runs the project faster than on my 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro which has 32GB of RAM. However, I wanted a more general way of testing Xcode so that I can better relate the performance to you guys, so I decided to clone this Xcode benchmark project from GitHub. Xcode Benchmark is a large code base to measure the compilation time in Xcode and compare the performance with that of other popular Apple computers. I followed the instructions before running the test by turning off the Wi-Fi, disabling all software running at startup, updating the battery settings, and rebooting the Mac. Now that the MacBook was plugged in, I was finally ready to run the test. The build time of 134 seconds put the M2 MacBook Air just below the M1 MacBook Pro. I wasn't too satisfied with that result, so decided to run it again. This time I got a much better result of 130 seconds, which puts it on par with the M1 MacBook Pro. I know a lot of you watching might be web developers, so I wanted to do some tests for you as well. First up, I decided to use VS Code as I know this is probably the most popular code editor for web applications. However, because VS Code is very lightweight, it will run well on pretty much any laptop. I decided to run the Speedometer Browser Benchmark, which measures the responsiveness of web applications. It does so by using demo web applications to simulate user actions such as adding to-do items. On the M2 MacBook Air, I got a score of 343 runs per minute. In comparison, my 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro has 102 runs per minute. This means you will likely see an improvement from the older MacBooks even for web development. I know Python and artificial intelligence are very popular among developers these days, so I went ahead and downloaded PyCharm as well as Anaconda to run some Python and TensorFlow benchmark tests. First, I ran the Python Mandel Broad algorithm, which stresses the CPU to test how powerful it is. The program ran in 1 minute and 41 seconds, which is significantly slower than the 14-inch M1 Pro for example, which runs it in 1 minute. Then, I found AI Benchmark Alpha, which is an open source Python library for evaluating AI performance of various platforms, including CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. The tests cover all major deep learning tasks and architectures, making it useful for researchers, developers, and anyone running AI applications on their devices. With a device AI score of 235, the M2 Air is at the bottom of the ranks below the Intel Core i7-930 with 288. So if you want to work on AI, you're probably better off with a desktop computer. I also ran an autoencoder from TensorFlow. I went ahead and set up the Anaconda environment on my MacBook in order to run the autoencoder. I ran the code with 10 input images and it took the neural network 1 minute and 13 seconds to reconstruct these images. I think most of you will agree that when it comes to programming on a MacBook, the best part of it is the Unix shell. macOS is a fully featured Unix operating system which makes the shell very developer friendly. It is very useful for a programmer as it lets you run programs in almost any language without using a specialized IDE. If not for a MacBook, developers would otherwise need to dual boot Linux and Windows to get some of the same experience. I know that a lot of programmers like using dual monitor setups when coding, so it is important to note that the M2 MacBook Air, just like the M1 Air, only support one external monitor. If you want to use dual external monitors, this is not the MacBook for you. In conclusion, the M2 Air is a good laptop for programming, but definitely not on the level of the M2 Pro, especially considering the price difference is not too big. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.